Kevin Naki here with Matt Cooper, and we are jumping into a game on Cursed Hollow. Now, of course, we're going to do a little bit different kind of a shoutcast this time. It won't just be me and Dustin yelling at the top of our lungs. What we're going to do is I'm only going to yell at the top of my lungs, and every once in a while I'm going to ask Matt for some real insight here on the design side. Looks like uh, we got our teams just starting up right now. We have Zeratul, Falstad, Diablo with a nice Lurk Hollow costume there. Of course, you all did vote for who to play that. Blood Elf Tehran sitting in there, and Malfurion over on the other side of the map. Looks like we have a Witch Doctor, we have another Demon Hunter, we have an Abathur, which of course I love to watch, Nova, and Malfurion as well. So uh, initially we had three supports on the blue team when we were in player select. Thank goodness it didn't end up that way. So just taking a look at things right here, we've got two pretty interesting uh, uh, team comps that are going up. Battle of course, the object of this map is to collect tributes seconds. as the Raven Lord spawns them out there. Once your team gets three, you curse the opponent's team for a Five, while. All of their minions four, drop down to just three, one hit point, two, and the towers don't fire one. anymore. So you have a really good opportunity to start pushing out there. Begin. All right, so specifically what we're doing here is we're going to take a little bit more in-depth look at the choices that Diablo has available to him. And you start with one of those choices right at level one. So Matt, could you tell us a little bit about what Diablo does at level one or what he's looking at? Yeah, so Diablo is a great character. Um, so he's going to, in this situation though, he's up against a team that has a lot of damage. Even the Witch Doctor and Abathur can add a lot of damage to the fight. So I think Diablo is going to be looking to build maybe a little bit more tanky. He's got a couple of support characters on his team, but I would probably build a little bit tanky. All right, so looks like he is able to absorb a lot of damage there, although Ku lands the kill down to just a few hit points and dies. So Diablo will come back in the future. Look, oh, Lurkablo just kind of disappears there on the ground. Uh, all right, so taking a look at the other lanes here, we have Falstad going up against the Witch Doctor here in the bot lane. And as you were mentioning before, yeah, uh, Witch Doctor is a specialist, but if you spec him right with those talents that we were talking about, he dishes out a ton of damage, especially once he gets to that heroic ability. Yeah, in the live version right now, I've been playing him kind of, you know, kill a town build or yeah. definitely focus more on the team fights, and he can do both very well, so... Um, you know, looking at the right team's team comp, they got a lot of damage going on. Definitely. We saw Abathur just pop onto the Witch Doctor down there in the bot lane a second ago, too, so he'll provide extra support. Zeratul gets rocked in this kill lane that the red team has established. We have Nova and the Demon Hunter there, so there we go. And uh, apparently folks at home are having a little bit of trouble hearing you, so just uh, feel free to yell into that microphone. Channel your inner Dustin as best you possibly can. I will do the best I can. <laughs> All right, so with Abathur uh, sitting behind this lane here in mid, don't forget, guys, Abathur's a little bit different champion. Some of you folks have had a chance to play him now in the technical alpha, but he's more of a global sort of a champ. He can jump onto any of your teammates at any given point in time, uh, and he can start supporting them with extra abilities, does a bit more damage, can shield them. Uh, on top of that, he has a very nice set of mines that he can drop wherever he wants. Oh, look at that! Diablo coming down to the bottom, snags a kill on the Witch Doctor, slamming him back into the bushes and not allowing him to escape. Yeah, so at the level 4, uh, Diablo's got a couple choices. He's got two upgrades for his W, mm -hmm. um, but Amplified Healing would be a great choice right now. Um, with a couple supports on his team, and it looks like Diablo is going to pick up Amplified Healing. And this is going to combo really well with those Toronto and Malfurion heals. Would you mind letting us know exactly what that Amplified Healing does? Um, yeah, so the Amplified Healing makes it so that any regeneration effects, any healing effects on you, are increased by, mm -hmm. I want to say 30%. It was 40 at one point. I think we just lowered that. I'm not sure that if that's in this build, though. But um, so every time Malfurion throws a healing to Diablo, it's going to be more. And even Diablo's just passive health regen, or even the regeneration globes are going to be more significant. All right, so he has a lot more sustain now to be able to help him through this lane, but we saw just before this red team took some great initiative trying to rally around this tribute here in the middle, who actually taking some damage, dishes it back uh, onto the Barbarian, oh, I'm sorry, the Witch Doctor. The Witch Doctor dies, Barbarian coming in trying to gather the tribute. Zeratul's down to basically no health. It's going to be difficult for him to re-engage unless he's sure he can just jump in, snag a kill, and get right back out of there. Oh, very nice job there. Ku actually able to do some damage from the side, slams uh, the Barbarian back. Yes. Barbarian even with Abathur on top and being shot shielded, that's not enough to keep her alive. Barbarian dies and blue team gets control of the tribute. So we're about getting to the point now where uh, we're going to see Diablo hit level 7. Of course, once he hits level 7, we're going to have a few more talents that are available to him. Kind of looking at how this match is shaking out, what direction do you think that Diablo's going to go now? Well, I think Block would be a, a pretty good talent here. Um, it'll give him a little bit more sustain against, you know, the Nova Demon Hunter pokes. But I think even Battle Momentum, there's quite a few good talents there. Um, Diablo's team has so much support here that 
you know, playing tanky is going to build into his, his, what his team's good at, but I think he can kind of do any build here um, if his team can support him correctly. And of course, the next set of talents is going to be a very important one at level 10, who will unlock his heroic abilities. Nova, though, just one more shot will kill Diablo, who dies once again. Um, let's see here, though. Malfurion is uh, trying to keep tabs on that lane as best as possible, but with so many people committed down, it looks like there's a strong push from the blue team up here in the top lane. They're pretty much going unopposed at this time. Not even Abathur sending down Locust, trying to absorb a little bit of experience from behind those towers. Um, of course, that does mean, though, the Barbarian sneaks in and tries to snag some damage on Malfurion. Malfurion, though, with those strong heals, picks up a regen globe and is able to easily get behind the turrets here. We have another uh, tribute that's about to spawn here. Of course, blue team is already up 1-0 in that regard. Uh, Abathur positioning himself to be able to affect multiple lanes here and should be able to easily blue jump on people and help. Tribute's just about to pop up now. Blue team is collapsing. All right, there comes Diablo from the side. Barbarian may get flung here uh, in just a second if Ku can get to the other side. It looks like, no, just going to sit there and do damage for the time being, continuing to absorb more damage. Of course, building very tanky right now so he can take most of the damage for all of his strong damage dealers that are a little bit more squishy. And a great fight so far from Blue Team. Abathur has actually not been that much of a presence here. Every time it seems like he jumps on a hero, it's just a little bit too late. Those heals can't, or I'm sorry, those shields can't kick in in time, and Blue, Blue Team's able to dispose of whoever he's on. And there we have it, another tribute gathered. It is 2-0 now in favor of the blue team. And we just hit level 10, of course, which means we're at heroic abilities. And what does Diablo have available to him? Yeah, so Diablo has two great heroic abilities. He has Apocalypse, which is a global, puts a, a basically a stun beneath every enemy hero's feet that they have to move out of. So it's, it's great uh, for the team fight. And, you know, it's great for picking off an Abathur who's going to be stationary in a base. It's just bonus damage. Um, and he can pick Lightning Breath would be his other choice, where he turrets up and does a bunch of damage. Uh, looks like Ku has picked uh, Apocalypse for yeah. here. Um, so that would be really great for those... those uh, tribute fights where everyone's kind of clustered in a small area. That's right, and, and, and you may have actually heard Ku get picked up on the microphone there a little bit. He's specifically choosing that because he knows he can root Abathur in place and he can minimize the effect that it'll have on the battles. Now, of course, even though Blue Team is up a level right now, Red Team did just hit level 10 as well. They have access to their heroic abilities right now, so these fights are still going to be very close. We have another tribute spawning. Thankfully for Blue, a little bit shifted towards their side of control. Red Team is quickly collapsing, though. Ku moves in, flings uh, Nova behind him real quick. She is taking some pretty good damage. Another ultimate popping out there. Claudio actually getting some pretty good damage or getting hurt quite a bit, but of course he is Malfear and he heals up very quickly. Looks like Tarant even escaping as well. A great throw from Ku as he's able to get his teammate out of danger. Oh, Zeratul caught in the middle though. He is pretty squishy and it looks like he will pay the price. No one on red team has quite fallen yet, so maybe this is their opportunity to snag a tribute. Okay, red team tries to collapse from the side right now. Looks like the Barbarian tries to make her way in. Gets flung back by Ku once again, making great use of that ability. Uh, of course, once Diablo is able to fling people back into his team, it's very difficult for them to be able to escape. And red team now is almost without options, but Ku, overextending just a little bit, does get killed. <laughs> He's confirmed the, the overextension. <laughs> overextension. Yes, that's right. Okay, now we're getting very close to where we're going to hit uh, level 13 here, especially as that curse is now in effect. Of course, on Cursed Hollow, when your team gathers three tributes for that Raven Lord, all of your opponent's towers stop firing. Uh, the enemies drop, or the minions drop down to one hit point. It makes it a great opportunity for your team to try and push in. However, I will say that Red Team is doing a nice job of pushing this back a little bit so far. They've been able to stabilize the levels a little bit. They're less than a, a level away. Um, but of course, without those towers firing, Falstack can just jump right on Abathur, and Abathur has no health to speak of. And uh, no, he sneaks his way out of there. Barbarian stun is going to do the trick. He overextends. Nova just needs to land a couple more shots. Zack decides in his dismay to hit the tower one more time. Yeah, so at level 13, Diablo had a couple talent choices. Uh, he could pick up Spell Shield or Relentless, which are both going to make him a little bit more tanky. Um, and those kind of deal with, uh, you know, CC heavy teams, mm -hmm. um, which Red actually has quite a bit of CC going on. Or sorry, the right team. Um, but he also has two upgrades for his Q ability. One lets him cast his Shadow Charge from longer range, and the other one adds a slow to his Shadow Charge, so it's great at picking off these weaker DPS heroes. And that looks like what Diablo picked up. He's going to be able to charge in and really uh, disable one of these weaker characters. 
Oh, he, God. he was doing a nice job of zoning people out at the front, but then red collapsed from all sides. Witch Doctor even coming in as well and landing some pretty good CC that you were talking about yeah. there a second ago. So maybe, maybe Relentless would have been, you know, <laughs> there. But it looks like uh, Diablo was able to get off his Apocalypse ult there, which which really damaged the red team a lot. Wow, and no kidding, Falstead jumps right back in. Everyone on red is low if they're not dead already. Barbarian gets stunned underneath the turret, but of course the curse has been lifted now, so those minions are back up to full health. Those towers are firing once again. And I've got to say, good job to Red Team to not take as many losses as maybe could have happened there. Blue Team had really nice control of the map up to this point. They were even pushing objectives and mercenary camps. We saw those knights pushing the top lane a little bit. But afterwards, well, it looks like uh, Red Team may be right back in this. Now, of course, we are about to approach level 16 as well. And that's going to pr pr provide some new options here for Diablo. Yeah, so he has a couple, uh, again, tanky options. Imposing Presence is going to make it so every time he gets auto-attacked, he's going to slow the enemies down, which would be pretty helpful against a Nova and a, a Demon Hunter. Um, Swallowing Flame is going to make his, his W have a bigger radius. I don't think who will spec into that just because he hasn't been picking the previous Ws, but mm -hmm. it's definitely an option for him. Uh, Fire Devil, when he uses his W, um, he's going to basically do a, a Burning Rage aura around himself to do some additional damage. That could be an okay choice. And Continuous Overpower, I think that's probably where I would lean. This is going to let him use his E ability twice to really throw around these weaker DPS characters and really muddy up the combat. Ooh, and Zeratul and Malfurion getting in a little bit deep there. Nice Nice job from Red Team to react appropriately. A bit of damage is applied. All the while, this Grave Golem is being attacked over here off to the left-hand side. Now, of course, the Grave Golem is the most powerful mercenary you can find on this map right now. If they're able to bring him down, it takes quite a while, and your uh, opponents do have a chance to push. But if it gets out on the map, it's a very, very strong uh, unit for you to sit behind and start sieging up your opponent's towers and objectives. Uh, Falstad applying some nice damage to the Demon Hunter up here. We are going to have a fight around the Grave Golem. It already has been picked up by the Blue Team, but but it looks like Red is getting smashed here. Very nice shot by Zeratul to jump right on top of the Barbarian. The ultimate comes down from Diablo as well. You saw that Apocalypse in action. It holds all of those units in place, and the rest of the blue team is able to jump in and really engage. Okay, so we have another tribute coming up. Of course, once a team is cursed once, that's not it for tributes for the rest of the game. Give it a little while longer and they will start respawning on the map. So even with the level disparity that's currently being suffered by Red Team right now, they're going to need to find a way to make these objectives work or potentially even snag a couple of kills so they can start reestablishing their presence. That's not going to help, though, as Falstead cleans up the Demon Hunter in the top lane. Now, of course, we've gone through many sets of talents, and the next one that's going to come up, of course, are those level 20 talents, the Storm Powers. And that's when things really start to get a little bit interesting. So would you tell us a little bit about Storm Powers and what those entail? Yeah, so the level 20 powers, we've kind of gone, you know, we've taken the gloves off, and at this point, we're kind of... Players can go a little overboard with the power they're getting. It's getting close to where the game's going to end, so we, we just want to give players a lot of power. Um, so you can upgrade your heroic ability. Uh, because Diablo chose Apocalypse, he can choose the Dying Breath Ultimate, which basically, whenever he dies, he triggers a second heroic ability, a second Apocalypse. So he can use it in a fight, soak up a lot of damage. He dies, uses it again, and of course his trait plays into reviving him quickly. So it's, it's pretty insane when you get that power. Of course, he can get Storm Shield or Bolt of the Storm, which allow him more mobility or team support for his team. All right, we'll see if he goes for that ultimate here in a second. Unfortunately, he is dead, though. Diablo passed away into the night. Grave Golem still pushing for the blue team right now, but it looks like Red still wants to engage. Malfurion running away. Of course, he's going to have plenty of health through this. Nova was off to the side, did end up getting destroyed. Uh, last ditch effort there by Malfurion to heal up Falstead, hopefully allow Falstead to escape. Um, and it looks like Falstead will be able to make his way out of there, at least for the time being. Red team is in hot pursuit, and it looks like Zeratul wants to come from behind and hopefully scare someone. But I don't know, with as low as uh, him and Toronto, if that's actually going to be a possibility. All right, another tribute is coming up on the map down in the lower portion. Uh, looks like Demon Hunter doing a very nice job pushing some objectives here. I, I will give it to Red that even though this, the, the map has been under control by the blue team basically the entire game, they're sticking right in there when it comes to levels. They haven't pushed Grave Golems. They haven't been collecting tributes, but yet they've still found a way to keep themselves in the game. Of course, now going down two tributes to zero once again, that could be problematic. All right. In the top lane, we see Demon Hunter pushing once again. No, actually, Hearthstoning back, but did take that uh, fort down quite low in health. 
And we'll see if Red wants to start getting aggressive on the map or start pushing any objectives. The one nice thing that they have going for them is they still have an Abathur sitting around, and he's able to push out lanes fairly passively while continuing to support his team no matter where they're at. So those Locusts will certainly provide experience and be able to get those lanes pushed just a little bit. All right. So, looks like we have another camp that's taken here by the red team. These, of course, are the knights. These are another very strong set of mercenaries. Uh, and if you guys are ever curious, I've been playing a lot of games with uh, people now uh, that are involved in the technical alpha. Kill that little that little knight first. It's shielding all the rest of them, and it's going to help you out. I see a lot of people that just try to run up there and start killing the big knights. Go after that little one. Oh, yeah, thank you. Right there is who slams him into the ground authoritatively. Um, <laughs> There's uh, that double slam for that talent there. Yes. And I am totally on board with that. Uh, all right, so the Knights are still pushing right now. Uh, nice job. Excuse me. Uh, initially there by Red Team to be able to grab those. We have a fight breaking out, though. Apocalypse comes down from Diablo once again. He did choose that ultimate over his Lightning Breath. He stuns all of his uh, opponents in place. But the damage is just too great from the blue team right now. Three members of uh, or, or from the red team is too great. Three members of the blue team have fallen. There goes Diablo as well. Tarand is not making it out very far here. Nice stun apply, but of course everyone can mount up and start to move over there. Starfall takes the mount off of uh, Barbarian, so she's going to take a little while longer to catch up. She did jump directly on top of them. This could potentially be a team kill, and there it is. This is going to free up the tribute now for Red Team to gather. They're actually ahead in levels right now. They're right back in it. Yeah, and that level 20 mark is huge. Um, kind of like hitting level 10 first, you get your heroic powers. The other team should really, you know, they have to respect that power. Um, they, they need to play a catch up a little bit, but it's only about a half level gap right now, so it's really not too bad. All right, well, could become bigger though in just a second as this fort is taking some serious damage. Members of Blue Team are starting to respawn right now and everyone is getting oh so close to those storm powers we were talking about before. Don't forget all the while, Abathur's still at the back. He's still pushing, he's still moving objectives forward and that top lane is starting to fall as well. Oh, Barbarian jumps out. Uh, Falstad making a very aggressive leap here into the middle. Uh, Falstad's pretty squishy though, doesn't have a lot of health to work with so that could have been very dangerous. Unfortunately, that, uh, that that flight now will be on cooldown for quite some time. All right. So let's see here. We have off to the right. Looks like Abathur has moved down into the uh, uh, into the bottom lane to continue pushing that. They've done a really effective job of moving that top lane all the way next to that last set of forts. Blue team, Blue team is taking another mercenary, mercenary camp, camp here off to the side just to reapply some global pressure. But it looks like this is going to get found out by Nova. Nova throws down her apparition. She's trying to do some damage from the side. The Knights are taking quite a bit of damage. Red Team is regrouping and actually deciding to not contest this. It looks like they're going to deal with the results rather than with uh, the actual fight itself. Yeah, and I, I think that's a little surprising just because they, they hit level 20 first. They've been level 20 for about a minute now. Mm -hmm. uh, it looks like now they are engaging. All right, and with those storm powers in intact, you can already see a lot of damage being applied by the red team right now. Apocalypse goes off yeah. once again for Ku as he passes yeah. into the night. Uh, and this may actually be enough for blue team to start yeah. turning this around. Falstad jumps in. Yeah. Witch Doctor has already fallen. All the members yeah. of red team are going down one after another, just the demon hunter remaining. And it looks like no matter what she tries, she will eventually die here. Uh, no more vault charges left, or shouldn't be at least. And it looks like she will die as well. So now we have a big advantage once again for the blue team. Even though the levels are very, very similar, red there's about 40 seconds where blue team could potentially get out because they uh, there's only one member for red right now that can really get out on the map. It's not like Abathur is going to extend himself and start taking objectives. Yeah, and we saw Diablo there picked up his level 20 uh, d Dying Breath Heroic, which is basically going to make it so he gets two Apocalypse off every single fight, which is going to be huge. That's right, and we saw that in effect there as well, and that extra stun charge actually ended up helping their team quite a bit. This charge is being gathered by the red team. Actually, Falstaff was up there for a while, but Barbarian came in and did a very nice job of disrupting Falstaff from being able to land on that tribute. So a fight is breaking out, but all the while, Blue Team is pushing some objectives over in the mid lane, and that is putting some serious pressure on Red Team right now that they have to deal with, and it's freed up the rest of Blue Team to start making their way to the tribute. They're chasing away the Barbarian right now, and if that third tribute is gathered, there we have it. Red Team is cursed for over a minute. Okay, so level 21 to 20 right now. We do have a slight, ever so slight advantage for the red team. Of course, at this point, though, those storm powers are already unlocked for both teams, so they're about on even fighting strength. Abathur jumps directly on top of the Barbarian as well, and you saw how quickly the members of blue team started dying. A couple other members out of position right now. They're not going to be able to gather up to the rest of this fight. The vast majority of the red players are pretty high in health right now. All the while, look at that Abathur. He's getting way out there and starting to push that bottom lane. 
All right. Oh, it looks like another Grave Golem is going to die here. This one going in favor of Red. That is actually the first Grave Golem that they've picked up in this game. So they're starting to reassert themselves on the map here, much to the chagrin of Blue Team, who up until just a few minutes ago was in pretty firm control of this game. So now that we've gotten to this point, both teams have storm powers. They're all very powerful. What can they kind of do from now to, to set themselves apart and really give themselves the best chance for a team fight, given that it's this close? Right, so your, your talent choices end post level 20. Mm -hmm. You're still gonna level up. You're still gonna gain, you know, some minor health and damage powers. Um, and depending on which talents you chose, you know, uh, Diablo has Regeneration Master. He can keep getting a little bit more regen as the game progresses. But for the most part, the players are kind of, they're at their, the peak of their power. Mm -hmm. um, so we're, we're going to be looking to see a lot of big team fights, grave golems, um, and I wouldn't be surprised if the next team fight could maybe even decide it. It's very possible, and don't forget that curse has been lifted right now from the red team, so we could possibly even see some more tributes becoming uh, a part of this in play. Supposing, of course, that the next team fight doesn't allow enough opportunity for one team to just push and destroy their opponent's palace. Grave Golem coming in for the red team right now. This gives a pretty good front line for the rest of the teammates to start sieging up and destroying these objectives one by one. There's Apocalypse. Koo jumps right into the middle, flings back a couple of members of Red right there. Nice Starfall coming in from Toronto. Actually hits a lot of different members of Red. This has been a pretty effective fight taken. There was that talent, uh, that that uh, storm power that was once again taken by Diablo. Of course, he threw off that Apocalypse a second time when he died. That allows his team to re-engage here. Oh, great shot. Three, now four members, or I'm sorry, there's three members of Red Team down. There was an apparition that was off to the side. All the while, though, the palace is getting pushed right now and is losing health very quickly. All right, so now it looks like Blue Team has to come back at some point, but Claudio is actually going after the Grave Golem for the time being. He knew that those minions were about to spawn in a few seconds, and it looks like he allows them to start pushing back here against the palace rather than getting involved himself at first. So, levels are tied up, 22 to 22, kills are very close as well, 26 to 24, one extra fort for Red Team right now. Global objectives are captured and out on the map at the moment, so until those tributes start falling, it's uh, really going to be uh, up to see if any team wants to put on any particular pressure or wants to take the initiative to start pushing some targets, because there's not a lot of obvious ones other than these Merc Camps right now. Alright, and uh, there we go. Mr. Crawford there was taking the advice and going after. Oh, actually sees Abathur. Abathur taking some damage. Uh, unfortunately for Malfurion there, he was dismounted. Uh, but, oh! oh! False Tad jumped in to try and finish it up. But Abathur says, no, no, no. I'm just going to go over here for a while. Okay, so the Knights are once again under attack by Blue Team. It's a very nice job on their part because global objectives are really what are going to separate our two teams right now. If you can get a set of mercenaries out on the map, however insignificant some of them might seem, it doesn't even have to be big grave golems. If they can just push a couple of different uh, camps, they can start moving those minions across the map. That forces the another team to react, pulls them back off of these bigger uh, tributes. And as we already see, Red Team now with up uh, is up one tribute to nothing. We're going to have another team fight right now. Apocalypse hits, and of course it does stun a couple members of the Red Team. Ku is going to fall here in a second. Apocalypse hits one more time. Is that going to be enough for Blue to fall in and collapse on this? Looks like Abathur used his ultimate evolution, jumped in there as another spawn of one of his teammates' characters. Blue team doing a nice job of cleaning up here off to the side. Just Abathur and the Barbarian remaining. And Zeratul comes back in with the help of Tyrande. That is going to be enough. The only person remaining for Red Team now is Abathur. And he himself doesn't have a lot of ability to get out on the map and start contesting these objectives. He really relies on having teammates around that he can jump on top of. Now, something you probably just noticed there is we're talking about storm powers. Sonya, the Barbarian, just respond incredibly quickly. Why is that? It's because she took a, uh, a storm power that actually decreases the amount of time that it takes for her to respawn. It's a very impressive and very strong trait. Yeah, Resurgence of the Storm uh, revives you instantly, basically, back at your town, um, but it has a cooldown of its own, so you can't repeatedly die and keep using that power. But, you know, when she's dying every couple minutes, she's going to come back very quickly, and that's a huge power. That's right, and uh, it at least allows another target for Abathur, as we were talking about before, so she's a little bit stronger than just herself right now. Looks like we see Abathur actually hearthstoning back as Blue Team is trying to push onto the palace right now. Of course, by killing that fort, they are going to start spawning those catapult minions that will give them a bit of extra pressure as they move along. Abathur actually going right back into this fight here once again. Uh, Mercenary Camp is taking those knights over by uh, Blue Team. Red Team tries to re-engage right now, but a lot of damage is already applied. Barbarian died, and of course, 
she was on cooldown from that storm power, so she has a normal uh, uh, reset until she actually is back alive one more time. Oh, look at that! Apocalypse comes in from Diablo. Huge amounts of damage done by the blue team. They are successfully starting to push back this palace. Who doing a nice job of soaking up some damage there. We'll see if Nova can turn this around. No, Demon Hunter is even zoned out as well. Zeratul gets really far into the fight, pays the price, and dies. But now the palace is directly under attack. Everyone from Red is getting very low at the moment. Ku doing a nice job of throwing people back into this fight. He's trying to keep people stunned and away from attacking people who are going after this palace. It looks like that is successful. The palace is down to just 20% and falling. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is going to be good game for our blue team. And I'm glad it happened that way as we were we were featuring the talents from uh, from Diablo. So good job, well done, Goo. Yeah. <laughs> Sigh of relief there from so our hard. Diablo player. It's so hard <laughs> to do this. Two professional players are, are rock stars. <laughs> All right, ladies and gentlemen. Well, that is going to uh, uh, close things for us here during the shoutcast. We hope you enjoyed taking a look at it and getting to know a little bit more about the talents in Heroes of the Storm. We will, of course, be back next month with another Q and A. And of course, you can check for more awesome content at HeroesOfTheStorm.com or on Twitter. Twitter, Facebook, or YouTube slash Blizz Heroes. This is Kevin Naki and Matt Cooper for Blizzard Entertainment signing out.